This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning and welcome to the Brick Presbyterian Church on this Sunday morning. It is good to see everybody coming in from the cold. I have a few announcements for us this morning. First, you'll find prayer cards in your pew. You're welcome to write down any prayer needs you have and drop them in the offering plate during the offertory anthem. We will pray over them throughout Lent, which we as a staff and in other groups have been praying over those prayers that we've already received. Um, there is coffee hour after worship, so please come join us for coffee hour. There are pew pads. Those are pads on the inner aisle uh, that help us keep track of who you all are. So if you get a chance, could you pass those pads back and forth and write your name and let us know that you are here uh, so that we can greet you all. Um, I want to thank my friend and colleague Caroline Unzaga for being here again this Sunday. Um, and helping lead worship. And then the final two announcements that I have is one, there's currently a toiletry drive going on. We don't have bags at every one of your seats, but we do have some on the way out if you wanna take a picture and see what types of things you want to donate. But here's the kicker is that they are for next Saturday, which is the day of discipleship. Um, so if you have not already signed up, and want to, please sign up. Um, you can find all this information in the emails and online. Um, but Day of Discipleship is for everybody from zero to 100 plus. So um, the more the merrier. Come, let us worship God. Friends, please join me in today's call to worship. Let us sing in praise to our Lord, our God. Let us sing in praise out loud. In the midst of the crowd, we will praise God. In our community, we will bear witness to our faith. Let us set our minds on spiritual things. Let us take up our cross and follow Christ.
My friends, please join your hearts with mine in a word of prayer. Triune and holy God, we come together knowing your greatness and your presence in our lives, and we praise you and sing to your holy name. We say praise be to you, God, our creator, for you give us life and sustain this world with your love. Blessed are you, our Lord Jesus Christ, for you redeem us from our sins and give us salvation. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit, for you console us and make your presence known in all that we say and do. Our sincerest praise will always be for the one whose grace is unfailing and immeasurable. To God be the glory now and forever, and it is by grace that we are able to pray this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, our debts to God are great. For all that we have done wrong, for all that we have omitted, for all of the sins that we have committed, let us come together and join our voices and confess our sins to our God. Lord, in this world of many voices, we fail to keep yours front and center. We bifurcate our faith from our daily living, and too often we only turn to you when it is expedient or our needs dire. Teach us to see all that we face in life through the lens of your Son's life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, hear and believe the sweetest good news, that anyone who is in Christ is a new creation, the old is left behind, all is new and has been made fresh. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now before we pass the peace of Christ with one another, I would like to invite the sixth and seventh graders to go to their Sunday school classrooms, and I would also like to invite those in fifth grade and younger to come up for a children's message. And Jesus said, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. Peace be with you. Let us rise as we are able and pass Christ's peace from one to another in his name. Good morning. It's good to be with you all. So I have a question for each one of you. Does anybody here play a sport? 
<laughs> what, what sport do you play? I play hockey, but I lost against the semifinals. That's a, okay, that's all right. That happens, it happens. What about you? What do you play? Okay, a lot of hockey players. Yeah, what do you play? You play squash, very fun. Okay, how about you? Soccer and lacrosse, okay. Volleyball, okay. Any tennis players? Anybody play tennis? Okay, all right. You play, okay. How about you? Baseball, okay. Tennis. You play tennis, okay. All right. Basketball? Baseball. Soccer, okay. All right, a lot of athletes here. Okay, so I have another question. In the sports that you play, do you wear any equipment? Any kind of, okay, what do you wear? For hockey, I wear hockey gear. You wear hockey gear, okay. What do you wear? Goggles, okay, that makes sense. What about you? Definitely too much hockey gear. Too much hockey gear, okay, anybody else? No, all right, so what do we think that this equipment does for us when we're playing our sport, yeah? It protects you. That's exactly right. Now, what, what especially it, the hockey pads because you might fall on the ice. Yeah, that's right. Now, what is it? What else in, in other sports? What does what does the equipment protect you from? Okay. All right. Okay. Objects that are moving across the ice. That's exactly right. Okay, we'll take one more. Yeah, you were you were going to say something? No. Okay. All right. Well, in today's lesson. We're going to talk about something that's kind of like getting ready for a sport. But instead of a sport, we're talking about getting ready for life, getting ready for each day, making sure that we've invited God to be with us. So in today's lesson, we're going to talk about putting on the armor of God, the protective gear of God. So if you can think about it like you're putting on sports equipment, and as you said, it's, it's to protect you. Uh, when Reverend Gorman was younger, he also played hockey and lacrosse, and those are two sports where he wore a lot of protective equipment. So let's go through kind of the armor of God. What is, it, what is it, God's presence in our lives? What kind of armor does God provide us with? So we'll start with what is called the belt of truth. Now, there, there's an old saying that the truth sets us free. The truth is, is a form of armor of protection that we can use in daily life. The belt of truth is the reminder that we know God, and we know Christ, and we know that all God has done for us is for our good. Yeah? Uh, I know another one. Okay. It's pads because they can protect you from falling or something. That's exactly right. So we'll, the next one will say the pads of God, which are kindness and caring and compassion, being compassionate and being good and being honest and being fair. And then we also have the shoes, which protect you and help you to move, help you to proclaim the gospel of peace. The shoes of God help you to teach others about Christ, about the love that God has for them, about what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be a child of God. We have the shield of faith, now, faith is remembering that God is with us no matter where we go. God is watching over us. God is protecting us. God is loving us, and God is caring for us. And finally, for those of you who play hockey and lacrosse, you know this, we have the helmet of grace, the reminder that God forgives us and loves us and protects us no matter where we go. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you thanks for the joy of sports, sports that you call us to participate in. We give you thanks for protective equipment that keep us safe as we participate in sports. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the sport of life, your greatest gift to us. We give you thanks that you, in your grace and love, protect us through life each and every day. Amen. All right, you can go back to your seats. Thank you.
Friends, please join your hearts and minds with mine as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, you have the words of eternal life. By your Holy Spirit, let your words pierce our darkness, strengthen our faith, and illumine our witness for you. Amen. The writer of the letter to the Ephesians gives several pieces of advice on how to live the new Christian life as distinct from the old pagan life. In today's text, the writer gives advice on the spirit or Christian spiritual warfare. Hear now these words from God to us from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 20. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, take the shield of faith with, it, with, with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times in every prayer and every supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known the boldness of the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I speak. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for which we say, Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Would you please pray with me? Dear Lord, open our hearts and fill us with your Holy Spirit. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. Help us to do what you want us to do. And let your will be our will. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Today's text tells us to look to God for strength. More specifically, to be strong in the Lord. And it tells us how we can do that. We are to put on the whole armor of God so that we may be able to stand up against the wiles of the devil. A preacher who preached here a few summers ago named J. Herbert Nelson who was the stated clerk of the Peace USA, he said that if you have a problem with the word devil, just drop the D, and that works too. Anyway, I think we all need this reminder, and I think we all need it every day of our lives, to put on the whole armor of God before we face each day, because we very well may face evil. 
or at least come into contact with it that day. Friends, there are all kinds of evil. There are the blatantly obvious kinds, and then there are the subtle ones, the ones that hit you once and the others that play the long game. There are evils all around us. Just turn on the news for two minutes, and you can get a sense of it playing out all around us and all around the world. You may not believe in the devil, or even demons for that matter, but one can hardly deny the fact that there is evil in this world. It exists. So whether we are talking about Satan or angels versus demons or good versus evil, we still need to have this conversation. God equips each of us with the full body of armor in order to survive in this world against the different evils that we each experience and that we each face while trying to live out our faithful lives in Jesus Christ. Christians need to understand what armament is available to them and to their community. We also need to know those things the armament is there to protect us from. We need to be aware of and reflect on what is constantly battling our faith, the things that hinder us in our constant struggle against evil forces. As the scripture says, that is, the rulers, authorities, cosmic powers of this present darkness, and the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I've thought of one way that we can do this. If we were in another setting right now, perhaps like an adult education lecture, I would have all of us do an activity right here and right now. This would be a peaceful, calming activity with self-reflection on one's own armor of God. We would pass out pieces of paper to everyone, as well as several crayons or markers for all of us to share. Then we would all be asked to draw self-portraits wearing the full armor of God. During this time, we would then be reminded of what the pieces of armor are, the ones that God provides us with, such as the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, shoes to proclaim the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, or our Bible. After a little while of drawing our own self-portraits, we would be asked to write words around our armor or on the sides of the page, expressing the different flaming arrows of the evil one that our armor is protecting us from. These arrows could be anything, such as vanity, despair, addiction, evil thoughts or deeds, things we have seen on social media or the news, being overcommitted or overwhelmed. In the Old Testament, arrows sometimes referred to as wicked words, false testimony, or words of deceit. <clears throat> Friends, these will be different for each of us. This would be a great activity for each of us to think hard about what our own personal demons are, about what might distract us from God, from our faith, from being the Christians that we were meant to be. Some examples of these arrows across the ages <clears throat> are things that have been said, or perhaps that we falsely believe, and that are not true. Things like, you can't trust God, or wealth will solve all your problems and make you happy, or your worth is based on your looks or your achievements, or there is no forgiveness for that sin, and worst, God does not love you. He has rejected you or abandoned you. <clears throat> Before I go on, let me stop here and remind you of these things. God never rejects you or abandons you, and no sin is too big for God to forgive. 
Your worth has nothing to do with monetary wealth or what you look like on the outside, but everything to do with what you look like on the inside. You see, God prepares each of us with armor and protection in our battle with the evils of this world. But sometimes we choose not to put on that armor, or we forget about them, or we neglect them. You see, God is an ever-present protector in times of danger, and we can never forget that. So what do we do to put on the whole armor of God? Do we read scripture every day? Do we pray when we wake up and when we go to bed? Do we attend a Bible study? And how often do we attend church services? In today's scripture lesson, Paul says, Take up the whole armor of God and stand firm. Stand, therefore, and put on the whole armor of God. In just a moment, I will lead us in a way to do that. But before I do, I want to share some of the importance of always doing that. Whether things are going really well or going terribly. Because something that is funny about human nature is that oftentimes when things are going really well, we forget to turn to God. And then when things are going really poorly for us, we remember to seek God for help. But that leaves us frustrated and sometimes gives us words like, God, why aren't you listening? Why did you let this happen to me? Where are you? God, do you even exist? However, when we face every day in the same way, the days that we would call highs and the days that we would call lows, if we faced all of them with the whole armor of God, that puts us in a better place that equips us more to face the low days with the strength of God, and that lets us celebrate the great days with God, thanking God for all the blessings we have in our lives. Then when we face those low days, those hard days, our faith is prepared to protect us more and to give us more strength, to help us rise up to the occasion more and to see that God is with us in all of it. Having the whole armor of God on helps the highs be higher and the lows not quite as low. A handful of you here have heard this following prayer that I shared a long time ago in a sermon, but I'm going to share it again. I think it can help all of us, including me, put the whole armor of God on again to face the evils in the world that bombard us day after day. So allow me to suggest starting your day with something along the lines of the following. At this time, please feel free to get yourself in a prayerful position or to remain attentive the way you would for any sermon, but join your hearts with mine in a word of prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Thank you for being my strength and my ever-present help in trouble. Thank you for being the victor over death. Lord, this day I stand firm and want to put on the whole armor of God. Lord, give me the protection that I need. Fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit and control my actions and reactions for this day. Help me to be victorious over the trials I will face. Lord, this morning I put on the belt of truth. The truth about you, Lord, my creator, my savior, the Christ, the one who is victorious over death and the one who knows all even before it is on my lips. Lord, you lived as one of us on this earth and when you were tempted by evil, you did not sin. Lord, give me that strength, that power, and guide me to act out of the love that you have taught me to not out of the falsehood of those things that oppose you and your will. The Lord Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Seal that on my heart, Lord, and reveal it to me afresh each new day. Lord, clothe me with the breastplate of righteousness this day. Help me to be morally right, virtuous, upright, 
decent, kind, and caring. Help me to be compassionate, good, honest, and fair. Help me to be pure, ethical, upstanding, principled, respectable, and noble. Lord, help me to be worthy, decent, and honest. Do not let me be or become evil or wicked, deceitful or wayward. Help me to not be nasty, mischievous, or malicious. Rather, let your love shine brightly through me, Lord. Lord, John said that he was not worthy to touch the thong of your sandal, and yet here I stand asking that you help me to put on the sandals of the gospel of peace. Send me where you will to spread your message, to be your healing touch. Help me to wear your scriptures on my sleeve and to be a calm and tranquil presence in an often hurried and harried city. Use me to be a mediator, to be someone who keeps his or her composure no matter what the circumstances. Help me to be content and to bring order and harmony to this world. Lord, protect me as I stand firmly holding your shield of faith. Let there be no doubt this day knowing that you are with me wherever I may go, and that you go before me. <clears throat> Lord, you hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Do not let me be afraid, for you are with me this day and every day. Lord, I trust in you and in you alone. I believe in you and have confidence in you. Because I believe, Lord, help me to be prepared for whatever comes at me. Whatever evils may lurk around me, Lord, remind me that you are there with me and for me, constantly guiding and always surrounding me with your embrace. Lord, I place upon my head the helmet of salvation. You have delivered me from sin and its consequences. You are the Redeemer who has redeemed me. You are the Deliverer who has delivered me. You are the Reclaimer who has claimed me as your own. Lord, with this helmet, help me to persevere as you have preserved me and deliver me from all harm, ruin, or loss. Protect my mind and keep it focused on divine things, on heavenly and pure things, and protect me from evil and harmful thoughts. Lord, finally, clothe me with the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Write it all on my heart and help me to use it as my guide. Lord, as it is written in John, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Lord, seal your word upon my heart. Comfort me with it. Protect me with it. Teach me with it again and again. Heavenly Father, send me out into the world as a light among darkness. Protect me from all evil and all things. Allow me to do good. I ask all these things in your wonderful Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. This prayer <clears throat> that we have all just experienced together is perhaps the cliff notes of what it means to put on the whole armor of God. But hopefully you get the gist of what I am trying to teach and to remind all of us this morning. And so finally, as Paul asked in Ephesians, so I ask of you, pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel. Pray that I may declare it boldly as I must speak. And friends, pray for the Brick Church. Pray for all of its programs, for all of its leaders, the pastors, the board of session, the elders, the deacons, the congregants, our new members, pray for the young and pray for the old, pray for the staff and pray for the school, because if you're not praying for us, who is? 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mr. Moderator, members of the congregation, on behalf of the Brick Presbyterian Church in the city of New York, I present the following persons for membership at the Brick Church. By reinstatement of membership, Nicholas Hoagland. By reaffirmation of faith, Mary Brent Carver and Gordon Carver. Joel Casas, Michael Hanna, Victoria Hanna, Alyssa Kuhn, Nicholas Lutgerat, Paget Lutgerat, Natalie Lucas, Buck Marshall, Fulvia McCree, Hudson Overcash, George Pector, Kevin Richard, Ian Rorick, Melissa Shelley, and by baptism, Robin Ehrlich, Madeline Kamal, Eric Lucas, Emily Stratton, and Bridget Wright. Friends, we rejoice that you desire to declare or affirm your Christian faith and to share with us in our common life and work. For as you heard me earlier, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all who is above all and through all and in all. I put these questions to all of you who for the first time are professing your faith in Jesus Christ in pe preparation for your baptism and to all the rest joining us in order to reaffirm your commitment to our Lord as you join our faith community. Do you trust in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Do you? Do you intend to be his disciple, to obey his word and to show his love? Do you? Will you be a faithful member of this congregation, giving of yourself in every way? And will you seek the fellowship of the church wherever you may be? Will you? Would everyone please join your hearts with mine in prayer? We give you thanks, eternal God, for you nourish all living things by the gift of water. In the beginning, your spirit moved over the watery chaos, calling for order and life. You led Israel out of slavery through the waters of the sea into freedom. In the waters of Jordan, Jesus was baptized by John and anointed with your spirit. By his death and resurrection, Christ set us free from sin and death and opened the way to life eternal. We thank you, O God, for the water of baptism. For in it, we are buried with Christ in his death. From it, we are raised to share in his resurrection. Pour out your spirit upon us and upon this water, that this font may be the womb of new birth. May these people be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. Bind them to the household of faith, guard them from all evil, and strengthen them to serve you with joy. Amen. <clears throat> Robin, would you come forward first?
Madeline Francis. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eric. Emily. Kelsey, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That is an amazing thing to witness that we just baptized that many adults. Congratulations to everybody that is here. Um, please join your hearts with mine. O oh Lord, uphold them by your Holy Spirit. Give them the strength of, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence now and forever. Amen. Children of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. <clears throat> Friends, new members, newly baptized Christians. You have come to know who we are and what, by God's grace, we strive to stand for. We await the privilege of coming to know you even better in the years to come as we worship and as we work together. The Christian faith is a pilgrimage, an adventurous journey, one not without risks. Please know that you do not undertake this journey alone. You will enjoy and be strengthened by the company of the faithful in this congregation and beyond. And in all of your life and in all that you do, you are assured of the transforming, empowering, and loving presence of God. We, as the church, are by no means perfect. Your church membership implies no new state of completion. Rather, it implies simply and clearly that you are wholeheartedly resolved to join in this journey. We, as your congregation and as your pastors, pledge our best to you. In turn, we ask no more and no less than your best, your regular attendance and worship, your sharing of time, talents, and resources to the greater work of Christ Church. We welcome you, especially that gift which no one else could bring to this congregation that is you yourself as a unique child of God. Final prayer for everyone, please pray with me. You call us each by name, O oh God, and promise us your constant love. Watch over these newest members of our congregation, deepen their faith and their understanding of the gospel and their commitment to you and your way. Root them in love, keep them firm in their faith and in the communion of the church. Increase their compassion for others and bring them and all of us deeper into the abundant life you hold out for all humanity. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Welcome to membership in the Brick Church family. Love and serve the Lord. Rejoice in the power of the Spirit. Go in peace now and forever. Please return to your seats. Welcome to the Brick Church. Thanks, everybody.
Friends, you may be seated. As we gather ourselves as a community in prayer, we also want you to have the opportunity to offer your personal prayers confidentially. Immediately following worship, a member of the prayer partners team will be available at the front of the sanctuary to pray with you if you would so choose. Now friends, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. God who gives us strength to endure all things. God our protector. God the one who leads all of our steps. As we gather together today as a community, we leave behind the worries of the world outside and we center ourselves in you and in this community. And we open ourselves to your invitation for us to pray to you in all occasions and to pray all sorts of prayers. God, we say prayers of thank you to you today, prayers of help, prayers of awe and wonder, wherever we are on our journey today. Today, we give you thanks, God. We thank you for new members who you have added to this community. And we give you thanks for new members that you have added to our faith. We thank you because we never journey alone. Your spirit is always with us, and you have drawn us into a faith that is a team sport, which requires journeying with others. We thank you, God, for this journey of faith, for the people who join us on the journey, wherever we are today. We also pray for help, God, we pray prayers of intercession so as we remember that you are with us in times when we feel threatened, in times when we feel vulnerable and we need to put on the armor of God. God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, help us to clothe ourselves with your virtues, with truth and faith, that fortify us for whatever challenges that we face in the world. As we open our hearts to what's going on outside of the doors of these four walls, we open ourselves to the suffering of others. We pray in that as we open our censors to that, as we open our hearts that you would protect us head to toe with your spirit. In this season, God, we also ask that you would simplify our lives, that in place of things and achievements, that you would clothe us completely with your virtues of love and compassion and forgiveness. We pray that these things, these true things, these spiritual things would guide our steps and our response to our own pain and to the pain of the world. Help us to interpret and respond the suffering of the world the way that Jesus has taught us to, with humility and with truth and with love. God, help us to be more like him, to be instruments of your peace. God, we thank you for chances over and over again to transform our pain as we learn what it is to surrender to you. Again and again, we ask you to help us to be humans with other humans. We pray these things in the mighty and the humble name of Jesus, who teaches us how to be disciples of the way of love. Amen.
My friends, as it was put so long ago, God is goodness, God is beauty, and God is truth. And all that we have that is good, all that we have that is beautiful, and all that we have that is true is God's great gift. So let us now, in gratitude for all that we have been given, give back to God, God's tithes, and our offerings. Amen.
Let us pray. Gracious and gift-giving God, accept these, our tithes and our offerings, as a token of our gratitude to you. We ask that you use them for the good of this, your world, a world so badly in need. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm as you boldly proclaim the gospel of peace, both in word and in deed. The living God gives you strength. The Lord Jesus Christ feeds you with his flesh and blood. The Holy Spirit fills you with life. You are blessed by the Holy Trinity. Go now in peace and strength. Amen.